All right, it's time to figure out who's better in a solo playthrough of Pokemon Yellow. Is it Victory Bell or is it Vileplume? Now, the reason that I paired these two together is because they are version exclusive counterparts. Victory Bell is only available in Pokemon Blue and Vileplume is only available in Pokemon Red. Also, they mirror each other because they both require a Leaf Stone to evolve. To test which one of these Pokemon is better for a solo playthrough, I am going to need a methodology. So here it is. I'm going to do a first initial playthrough to get a feel for the Pokemon and to collect some data. Data. Then I'm going to optimize their playthroughs with the use of software to get my route as efficient as possible, and then I'll do follow-up playthroughs with each Pokemon until I am satisfied with their results. Note that within these videos I will always do the same number of playthroughs with each Pokemon. Fairness in these videos is really important to me, and that's because I know that one of these two Pokemon might be your favorite Pokemon of them all. By the way, if Victory Bell or Vileplume is your favorite, let me know in the comments. The rules for each one of my playthroughs are as follows. I can only use my starter Pokemon in battle. Yes, I will be starting with these Pokemon fully evolved today. I'm not allowed to use any items in battle. I can't use any exploits, RNG manipulation, or save states. Also, I won't be able to use any glitches if they occur in the overworld. By the way, playing Generation 1 is basically impossible if you're not allowed to use glitches during battle. Finally, I can't use any evasion boosting moves till my Pokemon gets to level 100. And believe me, these Pokemon are not going to need it. Let's start by comparing their types. And in this case, they have the same typing, Grass Poison. In Generation 1, this is not very good offensively, like Poison is probably the worst offensive typing before the fairy type is introduced. Also, grass isn't particularly good in the early game. There are so many flying bug and poison types. However, grass is very good against Brock, and he usually delays Pokemon a lot. I don't expect that to happen today. So now, let's go through their base stats. Vileplume has 75 HP, 80 attack, 85 defense, 100 special, and only 50 speed. This gives it a nearly 10% chance to score a critical hit on every turn. Yes, in Generation 1, your base speed determines your critical hit chance. So summarizing Vileplume, it is a slow special attacker with decent attack and defense. But what about Victory Bell? And uh, yeah, this thing is just amazing. It has 80 HP, 105 attack, 65 defense, 100 special, and 70 speed. This gives it a 13.5% chance to critical hit. In summary, this thing is sort of just good at everything. It has more HP than Vileplume, which is surprising. The only stat that is worse is its defense stat. Honestly, in Generation 1, I just think that Victory Bell is set up for success. However, we do need to compare their move pools. Now, grass types in Generation 1 are not known for their coverage. They uh, mostly just get grass and normal type moves. Luckily, in this case, both Vileplume and Victory Bell get access to Acid, which is so convenient at the start of the game. They also both get access to Stun Spore and Sleep Powder. The former, I think, is going to get almost no play, and the latter is going to be used, like, all the time. Vileplume's starting grass type move is Petal Dance, which is basically a grass version of Thrash with lower power. Like, this move is not very good. And Victory Bell, of course, gets Razor Leaf. Yeah, this thing is so good. Like, ah. Oh. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed these two. In terms of TMs and HMs, they actually get the exact same list. Notable moves are Swords Dance, Body Slam, and Mega Drain. Now I mentioned earlier that in this video I'm going to be starting with these Pokemon fully evolved, and that does come with a downside, because normally Pokemon that evolve with stones learn most of their moves before they evolve. This was the case with Ninetales and Arcanine. Those Pokemon learn no new moves through level up. That isn't the case with Victory Bell and Vileplume. And if we consider their middle evolutions learn set, then we can see that there is a major discrepancy here. The uh, Victory Bell line learns growth, whereas the Vileplume line does not. Already my prediction is that Victory Bell is going to win this, so starting with a pre-evolution and evolving throughout the run would only make that more and more likely. So I felt that the most exciting and fair way to compare these two was starting fully evolved. Also, that's how I do all my videos because it leads to the easiest comparisons between Pokemon. And then I also get to make a Weepin' Bell video later on. And I think that Weepin' Bell actually might be faster than Victory Bell because it has access to growth and it can use this in combination with Vine Whip and then later on Mega Drain. Anyways, we'll have to see if the middle stage can outpace the final evolution at a later point in time. So before we get into the playthroughs, I want to talk about the thematic nature of these Pokemon. They're both fresh grass types, I think they have the potential to go really fast, and Victory Bell specifically looks very hungry. 
And if you're hungry, looking for something fresh, and want to speedrun life, HelloFresh, the sponsor of this video, can help you. By the way, I specifically tracked them down to sponsor this video because I love their service. And I love playing Pokemon, so much so that I want to find more time for it. Getting HelloFresh has saved me the time going to the grocery store because their meal packages are delivered to my doorstep. And it saves my fiancé time meal planning and cooking. That's because up until recently she's done all of it because I am a terrible cook. Like, I almost failed my grade 7 foods class. I got 55%. Anyways, in the past, I have not had the motivation to cook because investing a large amount of time finding a recipe, shopping for ingredients, and then cooking food that turns out to be dubious food was just so demotivating. But every HelloFresh meal that I've cooked has been incredibly tasty. I actually am learning how to cook because of it. A worry we had was that the selection wouldn't be good enough because my fiancé is a pescatarian, but HelloFresh has recipes to please everyone, from calorie smart, carb smart, to veggie or family friendly. Also, the ingredients are properly proportioned, they come with step-by-step -step instructions, and everything is always fresh. That's because it travels from the farm to your home in less than seven days. HelloFresh is incredibly generous, and they're giving 65% off when you use my code. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code ScottsThoughts65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video, and now let's get into these fresh playthroughs. Let's start with Victory Bell. Now, it's going to be using primarily Razor Leaf throughout the majority of the early game, and so I should really take some time to explain this move. It is one of four moves that have a boosted chance of getting a critical hit. Now, in Generation 1, if you didn't already know, the Pokémon's base speed determines their critical hit rate. This isn't the Pokémon's current speed stat, so if I use a move like Agility, I am not going to get critical hits more often. So Victory Bell has a base speed of 70, which gives it a 13.67 chance to get a regular critical hit, but with an increased critical hit move, what you want to do is take the base speed and divide it by 0.64, which will give you the critical hit ratio with Razor Leaf. And uh, if you do this math, you will notice that the number is greater than 100, which means Victory Bell is almost always going to get a critical hit with this move. There is, by the way, a 1 in 256 chance that it fails to get a critical hit, and there is also a 1 in 256 chance that it will just miss. So, like, yeah, it's not a perfect solution, but yeah, Razor Leaf is probably going to get a crit every time I use it in this playthrough. Now, I am going to skip the rival on Route 22. I don't actually care if he chooses Flareon. It's not very good, and it's quite slow. I assume that later in the game, Victory Bell is going to have no problems against it. By the way, I don't want to face Jolteon because it's fast, and it also has the move Pin Missile, which, if you didn't know, in Generation 1 does four times damage to Grass Poison types. That's because in this game, the type chart is a bit weird. Like, Psychic types can't take any damage from Ghost type moves. Luckily, there is only one ghost type move and it isn't very good. Also, both grass and poison types are weak to bug, and the bug type strangely is also weak to poison moves, which would give me a really fast way to knock out all of the bug catchers Pokemon because I have acid. However, in this case, I don't think that I need any additional levels to take on Brock, so I'm just going to head straight to the end of the forest, catch myself a Pidgey along the way, which is great. Luckily, Acid doesn't knock it out. I catch it with my Pokeball, and then I defeat the mandatory Bug Catcher. So, this is minimum battles to this point. Now, let's take on Brock. Of course, up first is Geodude. It's very slow, so I move first, hit with Razor Leaf, and obviously get a one hit because I also got a crit. Next is Onix. Now I don't move first against it, which means it could trap me in an endless bind, but Brock's AI is random, and what's the chance that he gets the one in four roll over and over and over again enough times to knock me out? Well, it's not very high, so yeah, it's basically a free first badge. So Victory Bell clocks in with an incredible time of 2 minutes and 56 seconds in the Brock split. With this time in one of the most notoriously slow gym battles, I think that Victory Bell is set up for success. Like, is it even possible that this thing doesn't get into the S tier? I don't think so. Anyways, before moving on, let's see how Vileplume deals with the early stages of the game. Now, because their movesets are so similar, I should talk about the one move that's different. And in this case, it's Petal Dance. 
This move has 70 base power, which is actually kind of worse than Razor Leaf, since Razor Leaf is always getting critical hits. By the way, in Generation 1, critical hits are not a flat 2 times modifier to damage, so in the early game, Victory Bell is doing actually a lot less damage. Around level 5, it should be doing 1.3 times damage with Razor Leaf, so I think at least in the very earliest stages of the game, Petal Dance is actually the better move. And that's because of another reason. Whenever you use Petal Dance, it only deducts 1 PP, and then it keeps keeps attacking, and it doesn't deduct more PP for the next 3 to 4 turns while it continues. However, you're not able to switch out of using Petal Dance, which can be very annoying, and then at the end of these turns, your Pokémon becomes confused, which is also very frustrating. Normally, I really don't like moves like this, because they don't give you a lot of flexibility in your play. You'll notice that in a lot of my Generation 2 playthroughs, I don't use a move like Rollout very much just because of this reason. However, today, I actually think that Petal Dance might be an advantage for Vileplume. This is for two reasons. Number one, every turn, I won't have to reselect which move I'm choosing, so I save a little bit of time with like text scrolling and that sort of thing, as well as decision-making time. And the second reason is that I'll have even less text, because Vileplume is not going to get critical hits all the time. Okay, so now that I'm in the forest, I mirror the exact same approach that Victory Bell took, why would I fight optional bug catchers, when I can just take on Brawl at level 8. By the way, my Pokemon are level 8 at this point in the game. You'll actually notice in this intro animation for Brock that my second Pokemon, which is a Pidgey, is damaged. This is because I didn't stop at the Pewter City Center to heal. Like, why would I? Vileplume has full health, and it's just gonna one-hit the Geodude with Petal Dance. I don't reselect my move, and I knock the Onix out too. Vileplume clocks him with a split of 3 minutes and 5 seconds, which is 9 seconds slower than Victory Bell. These two are so close to each other. Okay, let's continue with Vileplume out onto Route 3. Here I should mention that both of these Pokémon have the same growth rate, which is a medium-slow growth rate. You can see this information in the bottom left by the experience bar. I've tried to make it a little bit bigger in Generation 1 because I know that a lot of people weren't noticing that it was there in my former videos. Now inside of Mount Moon, you'll notice something that my Pidgey is still damaged, and this is because I have not healed yet in this playthrough. However, in the cave, I am going to do some additional training. I figured that just knocking out these bug catcher Pokemon are fast experience. Also, I take care of the hiker after that, and then I head down to face the super nerd. Now, this fight isn't the best matchup for Vileplume because he has two poison types. However, I can use Petal Dance here, and that's where I really want to praise this move, because it has so much PP that I should be able to get through this fight, and that allows Vileplume to skip so many heals. However, then I'm confused, and I hit myself a lot, it does so much, and I go down to 6 hit points. Luckily, Coughing misses its smog, I snap out of confusion, hit with Petal Dance, doing half, Coughing hits Tackle, and Vileplume survives on one hit point, hits with its next Petal Dance, gets a critical hit, and takes the Super Nerd's ace out. Okay, that was way too close, I definitely have to be more careful than that in the future. I pick up the Dome Fossil, of course, this is the correct choice, and then I make quick work of Jesse and James. Alright, so I'm making my way to Cerulean City, and if you check out my PP in the top left, you will notice that I have more than enough to just head straight to the gym, skipping all heals, and fight Misty right away. She leads with Staryu. It is faster than me, but like, what's it gonna do? It's only gonna use Tackle because she has good AI. I go for Petal Dance, and it knocks it out in one hit. Alright, skipping the move selection is a benefit to Vileplume here, because over the next two turns I'm able to knock her Starmie out and earn myself the second badge under 10 minutes. That is a 7 minute and 17 second Misty split. Alright, very well done Vileplume, these are incredible results. However, in the early game I haven't really had to face anything that was particularly challenging, but that could end now because the rival on Nugget Bridge is next. I just really want to emphasize here the fact that you cannot go to Vermilion City until you get to Bill's house, so I do have to fight him now. And the reason he could be hard is because his Spearow knows Peck, which is super effective. Just so I'm not locked into Petal Dance, I go for Acid, it does way more than half, that's great. Peck hits me and it doesn't do very much. Alright, I guess Vileplume has decent defenses. With the Spear out of the way, I choose Petal Dance to one-shot the Sandshrew so I don't get hit by Sand Attack. It also one-hits the Rattata with a critical hit, and then Eevee is last. Petal Dance doesn't get the KO, unfortunately I'm confused, but I still move through it, hit Acid, and knock it out. Okay, so the rival wasn't a problem either. 
And the rest of Nugget Bridge is also not challenging. I make it to the final lass. I call her the Oddish lass because she has two Oddish. Luckily, they're not an issue today because I have Acid. It isn't super effective, but it's neutral damage and I have the same type attack bonus, so it does enough to one-shot all three of her Pokemon. By the way, just a quick tip here, right beside her on this wall there is a hidden ether, which is very convenient. I pick it up in all of my first playthroughs because it can help if I get myself into a bad situation and I don't want to have to backtrack to the Pokemon Center to heal. That way I can save both real time and game time in the case that I make a mistake. Outside of the city, I defeat the rocket, he gives me the TM for dig, and then I head south. Here I have to face this junior trainer who I call Sandy because she has three Pidgeys that know Sand Attack. In this fight I actually want to mention the fact that Acid has a 33% chance of lowering the opponent's defense. If you look on the right side of the screen, I have implemented a change to my overlay, and here you can see in action the fact that the opponent's stats are now dynamically calculated based on stage modifiers. By the way, there are a lot more improvements coming to this side of the screen soon, so stay tuned. In this fight, Vileplume has ranges on the Pidgeys, and I get favorable rolls on Pidgey 2 and Pidgey 3, so take them out in one hit. With those trainers out of the way, I make my way through Vermilion City and head on to the SSN. Here I'm going to pick up some optional items. I like to grab the Max Potion, as well as an Aether, and then the TM for Rest. These are all items that I collect on my first playthrough exclusively, and then in the second playthrough I try to take them out if I don't need them. After that I head into this room, defeat the Youngster, and then pick up the TM for Body Slam. By the way, both Victory Bell and Vileplume can learn this move. Since Stun Spore has been pretty useless until this point, I'm just going to remove it. After that, I defeat the Gentleman. He does have two fire types, but they're both quite bad. Growlithe doesn't have any fire moves, and like, the Ponyta isn't much to write home about, it only has Ember. Okay, so it's time to face the rival on the SSN. This fight is never really an issue if you've learned Body Slam. I get a lucky critical hit against the Spiro, then I take the Rat- okay, another critical hit against the Ratata. that's great. For the Sandshrew, I decide to use Petal Dance to ensure the one hit. After that, it's Eevee, and I have two more uses of Petal Dance, so I'm able to take it out without sustaining any damage. So now, let's go and face Surge. It's basically common knowledge that he is very bad. <laughs> like, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that this guy is just completely incompetent. So I'll just take the moment to mention here that Grass Poison is exceptional defensively, especially in the early game. Like, Erica is coming up next, and she is not going to be very good against us either. So I take a quick victory against Surge, and with that I am ready to head into the mid game with Vileplume. So let's head back to Route 3 and check in with Victory Bell. Now here I want to mention something about it. It doesn't have as much PP because it has to use Razor Leaf and Acid, however at level 13 it is going to be able to learn the move Wrap. Obviously I'll replace Stun Spore once again, and now with this normal move I have options just in case I run out of PP. So yeah I'm going to skip the center outside of Mount Moon and I will head into the cave right away. By the way with both of these Pokemon, whenever Geodude shows up I'm just going to knock it out in one hit. The extra experience is nice and like it doesn't waste that much time. I grab myself the Dome Fossil, I'll show you the Jesse and James fight here. Um, it's very easy, like, I actually just spam Razor Leaf the entire way and win anyways. So, now let's head into Cerulean City. Of course, there's no choice to make here either, I just head straight for the gym, fight the Goldeen Trainer, she's no problem, and now let's go up against Misty. So first is Staryu, Victory Bell is faster than Vileplume, so it is able to move first here, but I miss with Razor Leaf. That is one of the downsides of this move, because it only has 95% accuracy. On the next turn, I take her lead out, and then Starmie comes in. It hits Tackle, taking me to half health with a critical hit. My Razor Leaf gets a crit, and it finishes Misty's lead off. Okay, so that was an easy second badge for Victory Bell. However, it has lost a little bit of its lead. It clocks in with a time of 7 minutes and 13 seconds. Vileplume's split was 7 minutes and 17 seconds. So now Victory Bell is only in the lead by 4 seconds. I think what's happening here is Vileplume is gaining a small amount of time through the advantage of Petal Dance. It seems like they've both had very even encounters up until this point. Anyways, let's head on to Nugget Bridge and fight the rival. First up is Spearow. Now, Victory Bell has a monstrous attack stat, but still I'm not able to knock the Spearow out with one hit from Acid. Next is Sandshrew, and from this point in the fight I am going to easily sweep. So teleporting past all of Nugget Bridge with the powers of video editing, I'm going to fight the Rocket outside of Cerulean City. I do 
save in front of him because the drowsy can be awful if you don't knock it out. This is just a safety measure that I have in all of my first playthroughs. After all, if I reset, I would reset back to the beginning of Nugget Bridge because I really don't like to save after I defeat the rival. Now heading south to Vermilion City, I have to face Sandy, and here we can see an advantage that Victory Bell has over Vileplume. The higher attack stat means that I'm easily able to one-shot all of her Pidgeys. This is definitely not a damage range. On the SSN, I make sure that I pick up Rest. I want to have this just in case. It is very good against the champion. After that, I grab Body Slam, and here I have to make a choice. Obviously, Wrap is the worst move because it takes a long time to deal damage, so I'm going to replace it now. I grab the Rare Candy, and then I go up against the Rival. And uh, yeah, Body Slam one hits the Spiro, Razor Leaf one hits the Rattata, one hits the Sandshrew, and uh, then the Eevee's last. Makes sense to use Body Slam here because it has lower defense, and they take it out in one hit. So let's head into Surge's Gym for what should be a very easy battle. Raichu is his only Pokemon, of course. I'm still slower than it, which is a bit annoying. I go for Body Slam and it does more than half. Raichu just uses Growl, which prevents the KO just barely. It goes for Mega Punch, doesn't do very much, and then I finish it off. Okay, yeah, that was very easy. So now as I make my way towards Rock Tunnel, let's compare these two times. Victory Bell finished Surge with a time of 14 minutes and 12 seconds, while Vileplume is starting to fall behind. It had a time of 14 minutes and 47 seconds. So that is now a 35 second lead for the Carnivorous Plant. I really hope that Vileplume isn't going to slip too much further in the next section of the game. But still, both of these Pokemon are performing really well. If you want to see a bad final stage Pokemon, go check out my Arcanine vs. Ninetales video. Okay, so I'm going to continue with Victory Bell, and now I want to talk about the trainers between Cerulean City and Lavender Town. The first one that poses a threat to most Pokemon is the Wrapping Lass. She's really annoying if she paralyzes you and then uses Wrap constantly because your Pokemon's speed is cut, but today Victory Bell won't have a problem because Body Slam looks like it's a guaranteed one hit on all four of her Pokemon. Up next, once I get just inside the entrance of Rock Tunnel, there is this Pokemaniac, and he has a Cubone and a Slowpoke, and uh, yeah, grass moves are very good against both of those Pokemon, so he's not an issue. Next in the cave is the Status Condition Junior Trainer, and once again, a physical move paired with Victory Bell's outstanding attack stat is enough to take an easy victory here. And then finally, there is the Self-Destructing Hiker. He has three rock ground types, which are obviously not a problem for Victory Bell. All right, so let's head towards Celadon City, and around this time is usually when I do a little mental check to see how the Pokemon is doing. For Victory Bell, the clock is around 17 and a half minutes, so this is a comparable time to Gengar. By the way, Gengar is the top Pokemon in my tier list, so Victory Bell is making excellent pace throughout the early portions of the game. After reaching Celadon City, I make the decision to skip the hideout and head straight for the department store. With the dominant performance that this carnivorous plant is putting out, I really don't think I need the extra rare candy and money from that optional area of the game. So because I didn't explore the hideout, I'm only going to have enough money to buy three vitamins. You might think that buying calcium makes the most sense, but I honestly don't think it does. After all, like all grass types in this game, Victory Bell can learn Swords Dance, so I think I'm going to be relying primarily on Body Slam for damage. But there's another problem that I could face in this first playthrough, and that's the fact that Victory Bell doesn't have amazing speed. So instead I'm going to buy some Carbos. I really don't want to get outsped by a critical foe at some point in this playthrough. After that I head west of the city and pick up the HM for Fly, and then I use this field move to backtrack to Lavender Town so that I can face the rival in Pokemon Tower. Up first is Firo, and I make a mistake here. I use Body Slam against it. I really should have used Acid because it chooses Mirror Move, uses Body Slam, and then paralyzes Victory Bell. Like, uh, it's really frustrating. If I had just gone for Acid and then followed up with Body Slam, I would have knocked it out in two turns anyways. So now I'm paralyzed for the rest of the fight, and the Firo hits me again with a Body Slam, taking me down to 28 hit points. That's not good. Next is Magnemite. Luckily, my Body Slam does get the one hit here. I go for Razor Leaf on the Shelter. Luckily, it misses Supersonic. Okay, so it's time for the Sand Shrew. It moves first, hits Sand Attack. I am fully paralyzed. It hits another Sand Attack. And then my Razor Leaf connects, getting a critical hit and knocking it out. Okay, so all that's left is Eevee. I 
don't think it's going to be able... Okay, well, that quick attack actually did a lot of damage. Maybe it is going to be able to knock me out. I'm fully paralyzed. I get hit by another sand attack. By the way, this is recalculating my speed stats, so now Victory Bell only has one speed. Just perfect. Eevee uses Tail Whip again, further lowering my defense. But all of these stat modifications have badge boosted my attack stat to ridiculous levels. So I finally hit Body Slam, it does so much damage, and I do take the victory. I have to say, that fight did not go particularly well. Granted, it was because of a player mistake though, I'll just have to be more careful here when I do my follow-up playthroughs. On the next floor, there's a Chandler. Um, she's really annoying sometimes because of status conditions. I always mention all of them whenever I'm fighting her, and I realize this is a mistake because a lot of you are like, actually, you're a normal type Pokemon. You can't get paralyzed by Lick or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I was just trying to go through all of the terrible things that she can do to you. She can paralyze you with Lick. She can confuse you with Confuse Ray and deal a lot of damage with Nightshade. So to be safe here, I'm using Sleep Powder. This is the first time that I've really utilized this move in the playthrough with Victory Bell, which is surprising because I tend to be addicted to sleep tactics, both uh, the defensive sleep tactics with rest, as well as offensive sleep tactics with something like hypnosis or sleep powder. After all, I did grow up playing Generation 1 when sleep was broken, and my favorite Pokemon was Butterfree. Luckily today, the Chandler doesn't pose any problems, so I'm able to clear the ghost in peace, and then take on Team Rocket. As a grass type, their primarily poison type Pokemon should be a problem, and maybe that's why they gave so many grass types the poison type additionally, it was to help the grass type out defensively, at least against the poison type foes in the game. So yeah, Jesse and James are no problem. With that, I head on to Cycling Road, I collect the hidden rare candy here as well as the hidden PP up, and then I head into the Safari Zone, here I collect the Carbos, Full Restore, and Protein, and then the key items that I need to progress with the story. With that finished, I head back to Celadon City and head into the gym, where I can now face Erica. Alright, so this should be another easy gym for Victory Bell. I go for Sleep Powder on the Tangela just so it doesn't cut my speed with Constrict. I miss, unfortunately, which is really annoying. It rolls Constrict, but luckily doesn't get the speed drop. My next Sleep Powder puts it to sleep, and then I use Acid to knock it out over the following two turns. I level up to level 34, and then Weepin' Bell comes in. Here, I'm just going to go for Body Slam because I don't need to avoid speed drops anymore. In this case, Body Slam does about two-thirds damage. It paralyzes Weepin' Bell, preventing an attack, and then I knock it out on the next turn. Okay, time for her ace, Gloom. Doesn't really seem like her ace, actually. I actually read a comment about this where someone said that her ace really feels like Tangela, and I do agree with that, especially in Pokemon Yellow. And today that's the case because the Gloom's really easy for me to knock out, so Victory Bell takes a quick victory over Erica. It clocks in with a time of 24 minutes and 3 seconds. So will Vileplume be able to catch up to it in this section of the game? Well, let's see. In the section of the game between Cerulean City and Lavender Town, these Pokemon play essentially identically. So I'm able to take easy victories against the Pokemaniac, the Junior Trainer, the Self-Destructing Hiker, and then the Gambler just before Celadon City. So let's check in with the clock at this point in the game. Vileplume is closer to 18 minutes, so it looks like the time difference after Surge has maintained throughout this section of the game. In Celadon City, I make the same choice, skipping the hideout and heading straight for the department store. Honestly, with Sleep Powder and then later on Swords Dance, I think that Vileplume is not going to need the extra level and the extra vitamins. However, here, I really think that it is mandatory to pick up Carbos. After all, I am probably going to need to outspeed a lot of Pokemon in the mid-game. Vileplume is weak to the rival's Kadabra, all of Koga's Pokemon, and all of Sabrina's Pokemon. Well, like, not the Abra, but... <laughs> It is weak to her other two Pokemon. Next, I head to Pokemon Tower to face the rival with Vileplume. I'll take this time to mention the order that I did these playthroughs in because I do think that that is a little bit relevant. So whenever I'm sitting down to film a Versus video, I have to choose which Pokemon I play first and which Pokemon I play second. Of course, I could just play until the end of each gym leader and then alternate back and forth between the two Pokemon, like say, play the Brock split with Victory Bell, then play Brock and Misty with Vileplume, then play Misty and Surge with Victory Bell, but the way my auto splitter works and all the technology that I have to coordinate behind the scenes, that would take like four times the amount of time to do. I actually used to film my Versus videos this way, and what I noticed was it actually degraded the results of each Pokemon independently. That's because I'm constantly switching back and forth and having to adjust my mental model for what the current strategy is. I do think it might work better for Pokemon like Victory Bell and Vileplume since they are so similar, but for other Pokemon I really do think it made my first playthroughs work. 
worse. So now I just play each first playthrough unbroken. And I have a rule that I follow for this. I always play the Pokemon that I predict is going to win first, and then I play the Pokemon that I perceive as the underdog second. This is because there is always going to be some inherent learning from the first playthrough that I'm going to be able to apply to the second one. Also, it's sometimes the case that I play both playthroughs on the same day, and in that case, I'm a little bit rustier for the first one, then I shake off my rust, I'm really warmed up, and then the second playthrough feels smoother. I do value fairness really above everything else though, and that's why I do follow-up playthroughs. I really just want to play each Pokemon until I'm very satisfied with the results that I'm able to get with it. So obviously the rival in Pokemon Tower is no issue, so I'm going to head to Erica's gym next. I'm only going to do the one mandatory trainer here, mirroring Victory Bell's route, and now let's take on the Grass Gym Leader. Up first, of course, is Tangela. Same approach here, actually the exact same turn ordering. I miss the Sleep Powder, get hit by Constrict, don't have my speed lowered, and then and my next sleep powder puts the Tangela to sleep. Now, Vileplume does have less attack, so it is going to have to 3 hit the Tangela instead of 2 hit the Tangela with Acid. I level up to level 34, this is how you can tell that I have done the exact same fights. And then I knock out the Weeping Bell with 2 hits because I got a defense drop. Unfortunately, I don't get it against the Gloom, so it takes me 3 hits to knock this thing out. Still, an easy victory for Vileplume. But you can see in that fight that I am starting to slow down just because of my stat distribution. Victory Bell had a time in this split of 24 minutes and 3 seconds, and Vileplume's split is 24. 5 minutes and 20 seconds, so now it is a minute and 17 seconds behind. Next I head to Saffron City, I really want my heal waypoint to be set to this Pokemon Center, and then I head into Sylph. After all, there are some important items to pick up here, I'll grab the Carbos, Rare Candy, Calcium, Elixir, Card Key, Protein, Hyper Potion, and then I go up against the rival, and here I did obtain Swords Dance, so I'm going to use that with Vile Plume against him. Now you'll note here that I'm trying to put the Sand Slash to sleep, I really shouldn't be doing this, it only has Poison Sting, like I can just set up for free, I learned that in my Oddish video, but I did not remember it for this playthrough. After I'm fully set up, I knock the Sand Slash out, next is Cloyster, I go for Sleep Powder against it because I don't want to get hit by an Aurora Beam, and I know that Body Slam is not going to one hit. By the way, Cloyster is the Pokemon that has the highest base defense in the entire game. Base 180. I knock it out over two hits, Magneton's next, I outspeed, knocking it out in one hit, and now it's time for Kadabra. It is going to outspeed, it is 20 speed faster than Vileplume, however it just uses Confusion, which doesn't do very much damage. Last is Flareon, and with 64 speed, I am one speed faster, and I can knock it out in a single hit with Body Slam. Alright, so I'm really glad that I chose to take Carbos with Vileplume. After defeating Jesse and James and Giovanni, I head to Fuchsia City to face Koga next. For this fight, I'm going to need full setup with Swords Dance so that I can hopefully take the Venomoth out with one or two hits. By the way, I want to mention an AI quirk here. Koga knows that Toxic is a poison move, and he thinks that it's super effective against Vileplume, who is a grass type. But uh, yeah, I'm also a poison type, so that's not a very good play. Good job. After that, I am able to put the Venonat to sleep and then set up with Swords Dance. So let's see if I have the damage ranges that I need. I use Body Slam, it one hits Venonat 1, it one hits Venonat 2, and Venonat 3 is also a one hit. Okay, it's time for his Venomoth, and today this is a bug type, of course it's bug psychic type, just look at the color. I go for body slam against it and get a critical hit which bypasses my stat changes doing less damage. Luckily, Venomoth does the exact same thing that the first Venonat did, it uses toxic doing nothing, and then my next body slam takes it out. Well done Koga. So Vileplume clocks in with a time of 30 minutes and 37 seconds. So now let's check in with Victory Bell because it mirrors Vileplume's approach through this section of the game. I head straight for Sylph and teach Swords Dance as soon as I can. In this case I have to choose which move to teach it over. I think Acid is the worst move at this point in the game, so yeah, let's remove it. Okay, so it's time to face the rival. Here I am once again using Sleep Powder on the Sand Slash. Obviously that's just to make things fair, right? <laughs> Anyways, I knock the Sand Slash out. Against Cloyster, I can just go for Razor Leaf and knock it out in one hit. So being able to one-shot this thing is a big advantage that Victory Bell has that Vileplume just doesn't have access to. Vileplume could use Mega Drain, but it only has base 40 power, and I'm not sure that that would be able to knock the Cloyster out. After all, these grass types have not had to do very many optional battles. I did some earlier on in Mount Moon, but really that's it. Now while Victory Bell doesn't outspeed the Kadabra, I tank its hit and knock it out. I outspeed the Flareon, taking it down with a single body slam. 
Okay, so let's face Koga with Victory Bell. Obviously, same tactic here. Sleep into Swords Dance, and then sweep with Body Slam. Unfortunately, Victory Bell is also not fast enough to outspeed the Venomoth, but Koga just uses an X attack and once again throws the fight. I do want to mention here that usually he is one of the hardest gym leaders, but today he was a complete pushover. Victory Bell clocks in with a time of 29 minutes and 25 seconds. So its lead is now 1 minute and 12 seconds. Honestly, that feels like a lot of time for this video because they started like 9 seconds apart and then they were 4 seconds apart, but for most videos, I would be saying that this is a very small amount of time that are separating the two. Anyways, let's proceed with the playthrough. I fly to Pallet Town and head south on the sea to Cinnabar Island. Now, as I explore Pokemon Mansion, I should talk about the two gym leaders who are coming up next. It's either Blaine or Sabrina. Theoretically, the Grass Poison type should be weak to both of these gym leaders. However, Sabrina is overall not that difficult. I do think in Generation 1 she is the gym leader that is the most overhyped. Like, she does have an Alakazam, and Psychic types are really good in Generation 1, but in Red and Blue, her maximum level is 43, and she doesn't even have any Pokemon that know the move Psychic. And then in Yellow version, she doesn't have good AI, she has one less team member, and the Abra can't even deal damage. That that being said, even Victory Bell currently doesn't have the speed it needs to move first against her Abra. Because of that, I felt like going to the mansion and collecting items in here was the best choice. Also, because I'm on Cinnabar Island, I think it makes sense to try Blaine next. After all, if I defeat Sabrina, her badge doesn't give me any bonuses. Whereas if I defeat Blaine, he'll give me a 12.5% boost to my special stat, which then is immediately useful for fighting Sabrina. Here's the thing about Blaine though. In red and blue, he's terrible, but in yellow, he is probably the second best gym leader. Like, maybe Giovanni is better, or maybe Koga is better. I think sometimes it depends on which Pokemon you have. But in yellow, I think he's probably tied for one of the best gym leaders in the game. All of his team members got level increases, as well as major moveset upgrades, and he doesn't have any weak first stage Pokemon like Growlithe or Ponyta. So with him fully hyped up, I'm going to skip all the trainers in his gym, and let's head straight into the battle against him with Victory Bell. He leads with Ninetales, and this thing is scary because it knows the move Flamethrower, and it also can use the combo of Confuse Ray and Tail Whip together. Today, Victory Bell gets confused on the first turn, I hit myself, which is really unfortunate. And then, Ninetales goes for Flamethrower, and because I haven't overleveled, it knocks me out in one hit. Now I mentioned that I'm not outspeeding any of Sabrina's Pokemon, and the same is true against Blaine. His Pokemon are actually faster than the Abra, so in this case, Ninetales just moves first, uses Flamethrower, and now we get to see if Victory Bell survives when it has full health, and the answer is no because the Ninetales gets a critical hit. So I went into the fight and tried again. The reason I'm doing this is because once my attack stat is set up with Sword Stance, I should just be able to sweep his team, well, unless I level up to level 41, resetting my badge boosts. Now I have to go second. I take a stomp from the Rapidash, flinch as a result. Luckily it misses Fire Spin on the next turn and then I knock it out. Okay, so it's time for his ace, Arcanine. Luckily, it's the Pokemon that holds him back from being the best gym leader in yellow version because it can miss moves like Takedown or just Spam Reflect. Could also miss Fire Blast. In the end, it's not consistent enough even though I'm using Sleep Powder and I finish it off with two hits from Body Slam. So for Victory Belt, that is an amazing 32 minute and 28 second split. Right now, I am on pace with it to get one of my best performances in Pokemon Yellow yet. However, there are still two gym leaders left, so let's take them on. Obviously, I have to take on Sabrina first. You're actually not allowed to enter Giovanni's gym until you have seven badges. On the way over to Saffron Gym, I stop by Coffee Cat's house and pick up the TM for Mimic. This is usually a move that I end up using, but today I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. After all, the move set that I have currently should be enough for the rest of the game, at least I think it will be. So now, let's take on Sabrina. Up first is Abra, and my Victory Bell actually has exactly 103 speed, so we are tied. Luckily I win the dice roll, put Abra to sleep with Sleep Powder, and then I'm able to set up Sword Stance to maximize my attack stat. At this point in the playthrough, because I have all the badges that boost my stats, every time I use a stat altering move, I'm getting the badge boost in all my stats, which means by the time I'm done setting up, I am now faster than both the Kadabra and the Alakazam. Alright, so this fight is an easy win, all I have to do is spam Body Slam. 
So next I'm heading to Viridian City to take on Giovanni. Now in his gym there are two mandatory trainers, this cool trainer and this black belt. Then I exit the building and re-enter the building to reset their position so that I don't have to take the spinning pads. After all, these are much slower than just walking. But on my way back into the gym, I decided to face this cool trainer to get a little bit more experience so that Victory Bell is level 44 for the Giovanni fight. I'm hoping that this means that I won't level up mid-battle and reset my badge boosts. So Giovanni leads with Doug Trio. It's going to do quite a lot of damage with either Dig or Earthquake. It could lower my accuracy with Sand Attack, or it could just one-shot me with Fissure. After all, I'm not faster than it. It hits Dig, which does about half. My Sleep Powder misses, which is really unfortunate, and then it connects with Fissure. So, yep, that's a loss. In the next battle, I once again sustain damage from Dig, but then I do put Doug Trio to sleep, which means I get to use Sword Stance and set up for free. At this point, I have enough speed to move first against all of his Pokemon, and here I'll just mention why Giovanni is very easy for a Pokemon that is a Grass Poison type. After I knock out the Persian, then the Nidoqueen and the Nidoking are only going to be capable of using either Tail Whip or Leer. This is because the AI sees that Earthquake and Thunder are not very effective against my Grass typing, and Double Kick is not very effective against my poison typing so it's just like yeah i'm not going to use any of those moves jokes on him because earthquake is neutrally effective so i make it all the way to the ride on and uh obviously it's slow and takes four times damage from razor leaf so it's just a simple one hit all right let's keep the momentum going i'm gonna head out onto route 22 and face the rival i don't expect this fight to be particularly challenging i can use razor leaf to knock the sand slash out in a single hit i go for sleep powder against the execute and then set up swords dance i probably should have just set up on the sand slash and then knocked it out Finally, I do hit the execute, but I get a critical hit, which means it bypasses my stat changes, so I have to two hit it. Unfortunate. After that, I one hit the Cloister with Razor Leaf, one hit the Magneton with Body Slam, one hit the Kadabra with Body Slam, and fail to one hit the Flareon with Body Slam because of a critical hit. It strikes back with Fire Spin, which is luckily pretty weak, but it gets a critical hit. And in Generation 1 with Trapping Moves, subsequent hits will also deal the same amount of damage, so I think that I might get KO'd if it hits five times. However, in this case, it only hits three, Victory Bell strikes back with Body Slam, and I finish it off. So after the pre-league rival, Victory Bell is sitting with a time of 36 minutes and 21 seconds. This isn't a good enough time to beat Gengar's best time, but I am fairly convinced that I'm going to clock in under 45 minutes. So Victory Bell is definitely going to put out an S-tier performance, and that's in its first playthrough before I've done any optimization. So the league is up next, but before we get there, we have to see how Vileplume does in the late stages of the mid-game. I decided to mirror my path with Victory Bell and fight Blaine first. I didn't want to go up against Sabrina and just have my accuracy lowered and like lose a couple times. And also mirroring my Victory Bell playthrough is the fact that Vileplume gets its first reset here. However, even with its low base speed stat, once it gets three badge boosts with Sword Stance, Vileplume can outspeed the rest of Blaine's team, and that's going to make this fight a lot easier. While that speed stuff is uh, only relevant if I don't level up, either way, even with a lower attack stat, I'm able to one hit the Rapidash, and last is Arcanine, but but it goes for Fire Blast, and uh, yeah, that finishes Vileplume off in a single hit. So you might ask, why not just level up? Why would you attempt this fight again? And honestly, what I was thinking is that Sleep Powder and Swords Dance in combination are just so good. But in this case, uh, no, I lose a third time, so then I backtrack fight one trainer in Blaine's gym. This guy here, he's the closest trainer to Blaine. He only has two Pokemon. He's really great if you just need a little bit of experience. After that, I come back to the fight, and then Ninetales just hits with Flamethrower, does so much, and takes Vileplume into the red on the first turn. Then I miss Sleep Powder, it misses Tail Whip, and then I put it to sleep. All right, so I'm going to get fully set up. After that, I'm able to outspeed the Nine Tails, but this time the Tail Whip that missed caused me to not get a fourth badge boost, which means the Rapidash is still three speed faster than me, and the Arcanine is one speed faster than Vileplume. Well, Rapidash uses Growl, which boosts my speed, so that's nice. Unfortunately, it means I don't get the KO range, but because I'm faster, I finish it off on the next turn. Arcanine's next. I'm definitely going to have to two-hit it, so I go for Sleep Powder, but unfortunately, it hits me and Vileplume goes down for a fourth time. So I'm going to try this fight two more times. If it doesn't work out, I will go and train up more until the point that I'm outspeeding both the Rapidash and the Arcanine with three uses of Sword Stance. In this case, I miss Sleep Powder against the Rapidash. He uses Growl, boosting my speed stat. Okay, that's good. Then I'm able to put it to sleep, reset up with Swords Dance, and knock it out. Because of that, I move first against the Arcanine, Sleep Powder connects, and I am able to finish it off. However, these resets had an impact. Vileplume earns itself a 35 minute and 18 second Blaine split, and unfortunately, it is now 2 minutes and 50 seconds behind Victory Bell. 
So the gap is widening. And I really hope that Sabrina isn't gonna widen it even further. The Abra unfortunately hits a flash. I miss Sleep Powder. Sabrina uses X Defend. Sleep Powder misses again. Okay, flash misses, I guess that's good. But Sleep Powder misses for a third time. Like, I really wanna set up here because it can't damage me. I don't wanna try setting up against the Kadabra when it could crit me with Psychic. But now my accuracy is just trash. Finally, I put it to sleep, set up with Swords Dance, and then Body Slam actually connects and I knock it out. Okay, so there is a possibility that I win this fight, but I think it's pretty far-fetched. Cadaver's next, I go for Body Slam and it connects. Okay, so uh, I guess I'm like an AI player right now. I luckily do miss against the Alakazam, so all is right with the world. And I miss several times. It hits Psy Wave, does almost no damage, and then I connect with Body Slam. But because of Reflect, it doesn't do enough to KO. Okay, Alakazam uses another Psy Wave. Oh, it actually rolled the worst damage and only did one hit point. All right, my next Body Slam hits, and with that, I have defeated Sabrina. Now against Giovanni, Vileplume has a problem that Victory Bell didn't have. And that's the fact that after I set up with Sword Dance three times, I will not be able to outspeed either the Dugtrio or the Persian. This makes the beginning sections of this fight significantly harder than they were for Victory Bell. After all, even when I get Sleep Powder off and start to set up, it is not going to be consistent. However, I have taught Vileplume Mega Drain, which means even if I take damage against the Dugtrio and the Persian, I can gain it back later in the fight. Also, once again, the Nido Queen and the Nido King are not going to do anything because of my typing, so I make it to ride on finish it off with Mega Drain, and with that, I have completed the Gym Challenge. Unfortunately, Vileplume dropped a little bit more time, so it is almost three minutes behind Victory Bell now, but the League really is challenging, and I could see a trainer like Lorelei or Lance really mess one of these Pokemon up. Not to mention the fact that neither of them really have something that is good against Agatha. Basically, the only moves that these two can use to hit her Pokemon are Grass moves, and uh, yeah, her Pokemon resist them. Anyways, I realize I am just rambling on top of this final rival fight. Okay, I level up going into the Kadabra, and then it hits Psychic and does so much damage. But I just barely hang on with red health, strike back with Body Slam, and knock it out. Okay, remember when I said the Flareon's not very good? Yeah, it's not very good. It has very little speed. I go for Body Slam. I have Sword Stance on my side, but I get a critical hit. Are you kidding me? Okay, so that is really annoying because now it can strike back. Well, unless I paralyze it, it doesn't move and I get another Body Slam in. Okay, so I'm off to the league with both Pokemon. Let's do this. Up first, of course, is Lorelei, and for grass Pokemon, the fact that she's an ice trainer isn't really an issue because most of her Pokemon are also water types. However, there is a downside to using Vileplume here, because Petal Dance wasn't a very good move and it locks you in for 3-4 to four turns, I went with Mega Drain for the later stages of the playthrough, it's just a little bit more flexible and it gives me recovery. However, there of course is a downside to this, which is the fact that I'm not one-hitting any of her Water-type Pokemon, which is really annoying. By the time I've knocked her Slowbro out, I'm pretty bruised, Jinx comes in, it's faster than Vileplume because I didn't take the time to set up and because of that it hits Ice Punch and knocks me out. At least I can make it back to the Slowbro with decent health every time because when I knock the Cloister out with Mega Drain I gain back most of my health. Now this fight should have a very easy solution. I can put the Slowbro to sleep, set up with Swords Dance. Also I've just leveled up so I'm not going to reset my badge boost by doing this. And after fully setting up, Vileplume has 121 speed. This is one more speed than Jinx. No, I did not plan that, but it is very convenient. So I move first, hit Body Slam, and knock it out in one hit. Last is Lapras. I didn't think I would one hit this thing, so I went for Sleep Powder. It misses, I get hit by Blizzard, but Vileplume survives. My next Sleep Powder works, and because of that, I am able to knock Lorelei's Ace out over the next two turns. So that's the first member of the Elite Four down. Now cue silly music, because up next is the Hiker, and uh, yeah, I'm a grass type. This fight is going to be so easy. I set up Sword Stance just because I really want to one-hit all of the fighting type Pokemon. Uh, I still don't one-hit the Hitmonchan. It actually had a chance here to freeze me with Ice Punch, but if you didn't know this already, this is the only fight in the game where a Pokemon can freeze you and then defrost you with a fire move. Yeah, this Hitmonchan is really bad. Anyways, I sweep through the rest of his team, and with that, I have made it to Agatha. 
At this point, I realized that I might have made a mistake because Mega Drain only has 10 PP, and I'm going to be relying on it to knock out Agatha's three ghost Pokemon. So to improve my damage ranges, I'm going to use all 10 of my rare candies to take Vileplume all the way up to level 60 before this fight. Also, just before the battle begins, I'll mention the fact that I used one PP up on Mega Drain, but I didn't collect the other two that I normally get because I didn't go to the hideout. Now I'm going to want to put the ghosts to sleep just to avoid status conditions. Unfortunately, Agatha switches out and I put the Golbat to sleep instead of the Gengar. That isn't the worst thing though because I can just set up here and then knock the Golbat out with Body Slam. Oh, unless she switches out first, so now it's time to put the Gengar to sleep. Luckily, it's just choosing to use Mega Drain here while I miss, which is perfect. Finally, I put it to sleep. I use Mega Drain, and after the badge boosts, it does like, oh gosh, that's like a sixth? I don't know. This is looking really bad. Because Agatha is all kinds of wonky, she sends out Golbat again. I knock it out. Then Gengar comes back out, and finally I finish it off, but I only have six uses of Mega Drain left over. Essentially what this means is that I'm not going to be able to defeat her team because I'm going to run out of PP first, and there's not really a way that I'm going to be able to spam out 26 uses of Swords Dance to be able to use Struggle, and even if I did, Struggle deals normal type damage in this generation, so it can't deal any damage to her ghosts. So that is just simply a reset, and it actually took a lot of time, which is really unfortunate. So I had to make a tough choice here, which is what move do I want to give up? Mega Drain, Sword Stance, Sleep Powder, or Body Slam. Because of how far I am into the run, and the fact that all of these moves were either level up moves or TM moves, I will not be able to get them back once I unlearn them. And in this case, I did something that you might find counterintuitive. I replaced Mega Drain. So let me show why I think that this is the best choice. Against the Gengar, I can put it to sleep, and then I can use Mimic, well, okay, Agatha switched, and I'm slower than the Gengar, so that means she switches before I use Mimic, and she sends a Golbat, which means I'm going to Mimic one of its moves. By the way, in this case, there is a glitch. Whichever move you Mimic will be permanently put on your moveset, and you will lose one of your other moves. So this is just a reset. Okay, so let's try this again. Okay, this time she switches the Gengar out on the first turn, so I use Sleep Powder on the Golbat. Okay, it misses. I put the Golbat to sleep finally, and then I set up Sword Stance. This means I will be faster than the Gengar when it comes out, and then I can use Mimic, and this is where I am going to steal the move Lick. So as counterintuitive as it might be, ghost moves are physical. Everyone always tells me this is because Lick is a physical interaction, like you're licking something. I guess it makes sense. It also makes sense that they would want physical damage because Ghost is basically supposed to counter the Psychic type, even though the glitch in this generation means it does nothing to the Psychic type. Anyways, this means that Lick combos really well with Swords Dance, allowing me to do a lot of damage with it, even though it has a low PP. This way I'm able to one-shot Agatha's Haunter. Against the Arbok, I go for Body Slam, but I get a critical hit. Luckily, she just switches it out. I use Lick on the final Gengar. It doesn't KO. Gengar uses Confuse Ray, but Vileplume doesn't hit itself. I knock Agatha's Ace out, polish her Arbok off, and with that, I have made it to Lance. So what's the implication of unlearning Mega Drain? Well, luckily against Lance, all of his Pokemon resist Mega Drain anyways. Like, yes, technically it is neutral against Gyarados and against the Aerodactyl, but no, Mega Drain is terrible against those Pokemon, so I don't want to use it anyways. I can use Sword Stance to set up. After that, I can knock the Gyarados out and both of the following Dragonairs with Body Slam. But before I take out the second one, I can mimic Ice Beam. I decided to not use Sleep Powder here and waste time. I know I'm going to take an Ice Beam from the Dragonair. The only way I would lose is if it froze me. In this case, it doesn't. I strike back with Body Slam, finish it off, and now it's time for Lance's final two Pokemon. Aerodactyl is the first one. It outspeeds with Fly. Okay, that's really bad. It uses it, connects, and Vileplume survives. Ice Beam hits, it also crits, and Aerodactyl goes down. Last is Dragonite, I move first, hit Ice Beam, and with that, Vileplume has finished the Elite Four. Right now its time is 47 minutes and 54 seconds, and before I take on the champion, I want to head back and see how Victory Bell does against the Elite Four. Now it's important to remember that I played this Victory Bell playthrough first, so this was all recorded before I did that Vileplume run through the league. This means against Lorelei, I had no idea that I should be setting up Swords Dance later in the fight so that I outspeed the Jinx. Instead I just set it up on the Dugong, I knock it out with Body Slam, 
Clamp. Next is Cloyster, Razor Leaf crits and takes it out. And then I just go for the Razor Leaf on Slowbro, but it doesn't do quite enough. I take a Psychic, which takes me down to just over half health. Next is going to be Jinx, but Victory Bell levels up right here, which is really unfortunate. Jinx comes out and has two more speed, so it lands an Ice Punch, doing so much damage but Victory Bell hangs on with 13 hit points. Now, once again, I wasn't sure if I was going to one-hit the Lapras, but I actually made a misclick here. I just click on Swords Dance and it does nothing. Lapras uses Blizzard and misses. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Anyways, I use Sleep Powder, put it to sleep, and then follow it up with Body Slam, which doesn't get the KO. However, I finish it off on the next turn. So with that, Victory Bell has basically made it to Agatha. Yeah, let's just skip to her. <laughs> now, I went into this fight without using rare candies for two reasons. Number one, I didn't have experience. And two, I figured that Razor Leaf would be enough to get this done, just because it has way more PP than a move like Mega Drain. I think they originally designed the game and gave Mega Drain a low PP value, just because it also is a recovery move. So they were like, we don't want to make that too strong, or we don't want to give the player the ability to use that move too much during a battle. I guess it makes sense, but like what really doesn't make sense is the fact that Vine Whip only has 10 PP. Like, Razor Leaf is much better than Vine Whip. I kind of think that those two moves had their PP swapped somewhere in development, but that's just a theory. Uh, a Scots theory, actually. Now, the going against Agatha here is quite slow. I was honestly just hoping that I wouldn't have to set up Swords Dance. I wanted to sweep her entire team just with the combination of Sleep Powder, Razor Leaf, and Body Slam. Now, Victory Bell is actually going to manage to defeat her in this first attempt, but I just want to really emphasize the fact that this fight took a very long time. In follow-up playthroughs, this might be Victory Bell's one weakness, just because it could lose so much time if it has to reset against her, because let's face it, Agatha can cause some really awful things to happen. At least they didn't happen in this playthrough, so let's move on to Lance. Okay, so I do expect this fight to be a little bit challenging for Victory Bell. What I'm really hoping is that after three sword stances, I will have enough speed to move first against the Aerodactyl. And in this case, I am going to have enough. I have seven more speed than it. I knock the Gyarados out, knock the Dragonair out, knock the second Dragonair out, and unfortunately, Victory Bell levels up going into the Aerodactyl, resetting all of my badge boosts. As a result, the prehistoric Pokemon moves first, hitting a wing attack, taking me to orange health. I go for Razor Leaf, and even with a critical hit, it only does two-thirds. Unfortunately, this means the Aerodactyl moves again, and it knocks Victory Bell out. However, there's an easy solution here because I've saved all my rare candies, so I can use them now, and hopefully that'll prevent the mid-fight level up. Well, when I knock out the second Dragonair, I only have half of my experience bar full, so that's perfect, because then I can move first against the Aerodactyl, and oh, even with the full setup and the extra levels, Body Slam does not one-hit the Aerodactyl. It goes for Fly, and by the way, Aerodactyl is very fast, so yeah, it gets a critical hit and knocks Victory Bell out. Okay, so let's do that fight again. I'm sure if it doesn't get the critical hit, I will be able to win here. And I just want to mention that right now it might seem like this is incredibly tense. And like, yeah, it is. But Victory Bell is about to get one of the best times that I've ever got in Pokemon Yellow. Like, it's under 45 minutes in its first playthrough. And even with a bunch of resets and not knowing where to use rare candies, this thing is absolutely incredible. This time when I make it back to the Aerodactyl, I decide to go for Sleep Powder to just improve my consistency a little bit. This will give me two hits in a row, and even if Lance uses a Hyper Potion, I am going to knock it out. Last is Dragonite, I go for Body Slam, and it takes it out. And with that, it is time for the champion, so let's do this. So let's see how Vileplume manages this fight. The champion sends in Sand Slash. I go for Sleep Powder on it, which is not required. I can just knock it out because it only has Poison Sting. But it's kind of lucky I did this because I realized my mistake and I was like looking around the overlay and then I was like, oh, I'm about to level up. So I should just knock the Sand Slash out before I use my sword stances. I level up going into the Alakazam. And here I unfortunately have to tank a Psychic, which does lower my special. That is pretty painful. I put Alakazam to sleep and then I set up with Sword Stance. This gives me enough speed to move first against it. I take it out with Body Slam. I take the Executor out with Body Slam. I take the Magneton out with Body Slam. And then against the Cloister, because I have to use a physical move here, I am going to put it to sleep. Now, I could have mimicked Psychic from Alakazam and used that, but honestly, I think that relying on Sleep Powder is just as good. After all, Alakazam could have woken up and then knocked me out with a move like Psychic. Either way, I make it through the Cloister, arrive at Flareon. Again, this thing is bad, 
actually, I get a critical hit, so it survives. I was a bit scared, but then I was like, oh yeah, it has a psychic move, and I'm a poison type, so yeah, it just uses reflect, and then I knock it out. So, Vileplume has finished the game. It clocks in with an even 49 minutes of real time, with 9 resets at level 63. This took 3 hours and 2 minutes of game time. So honestly, Vileplume got an incredible result. If this was a video against basically any other Pokemon, Vileplume probably would have put out very competitive results. But here's the thing, Victory Bell is just so good. Unfortunately, it isn't good enough to move first against the Alakazam. It is under speeding by 5 points, which is really frustrating. I tank a Psybeam as a result, but then I put it to sleep, set up Swords Dance, and by the way, I only do that twice because then the Alakazam wakes up and I'm just like, this should be good enough, let's just sweep his team. And uh, yeah, Victory Bell does sweep his team, it's very easy. Even the Cloister, because I don't have to use Sleep Powder here, I can just knock it out with Razor Leaf. So, Victory Bell clocks in with a time of 44 minutes and 42 seconds, with 5 resets at level 63. This took 2 hours and 49 minutes of game time. So comparing the results, the two both finished at the exact same level, that's largely because they both have the same growth rate, and they fought like almost the identical trainers throughout the entire playthrough. Of course, Vileplume had 4 more resets, so now let's compare the times. Of course, Vileplume was slower in game time. I think this is largely just because it had to use a lot more sleep powder and like its moves just don't KO quite as fast, so it's taking more time per battle. Also, after everything finally played out, it was 4 minutes and 18 seconds slower than Victory Bell. So the very close results that we had at the beginning of the playthrough really diverged by the end of the playthrough to make it quite a big difference. However, it's never fair to stop after just one playthrough. Also, it's my channel, so like, I'm obsessed with these games, we're just gonna keep playing. Let's do some additional playthroughs after optimization and see just how good these Pokemon can really be. So I'm gonna play these follow-ups in the same order that I played the original two playthroughs, so just keep that in mind. We're starting with Victory Bell. Immediately coming out of the first playthroughs, the thought in my mind was that these are gonna be very easy to optimize. The fact that I put off using my rare candies until partway through the league means that these Pokemon can definitely use those candies earlier on in the playthrough to smooth out some of the speed bumps that they experienced. Because I'm primarily thinking about the mid-game and how to optimize that, I am not going to change change too much about the early game, after all, it was working very well for Victory Bell. Still in Mount Moon, I will battle some additional trainers just to get a little bit more experience. When I was doing this playthrough, I didn't really see why I would skip them, like it's only three battles and I get a decent amount of experience from it. It's going to speed up the next sections of the game by just having a little bit more damage for all the random trainers that I have to defeat. So now let's skip way ahead to Celadon City, and this time I am arriving with a faster time, which is just great. In the department store, I pick up three Carbos again, and then I head to Pokemon Tower. Once this area is finished off, I can head back to Erika's gym. Now, last time I only fought the one mandatory trainer with the Execute, but this time I am going to fight four trainers. So first this beauty, she has four Pokemon, then this Lass, this cool trainer right beside her. By the way, the cool trainer has three middle stage Pokemon, and they give a lot of experience. After that, I also fight the beauty with the Execute, and this is going to give Victory Bell the experience that it needs for what's coming next in the playthrough. After defeating Erika, I head to Sylph where I fight this rocket on the 10th floor. He only has a single Machoke, and once Victory Bell defeats it, it gets just enough experience to level up to 36. Now the reason that I wanted to level up as precisely as this is so that when I use rare candies, I am gaining the maximum possible experience. And now I am going to use 5 to take Victory Bell up to level 41. With Swords Dance and enough speed to move first against the entire rival's team, he is easy to crush. Then I head to Koga's gym, and you might think that there's inconsistency here because I'm moving second against the Venomoth, but like, there really isn't. It can't two hit me with Psychic. The only way that would happen is if it lowers my special on the first attack, and then the second turn it again uses Psychic, but it could also use Leech Life or Toxic, so I think that's very unlikely. Now defeating Koga took Victory Bell up to level 45, and in Blaine's gym I can use 4 rare candies to go up to level 49. This gives me just enough speed, and I mean just enough, like I have one more speed than the Rapidash. So I'm going to move first against his entire team. But that isn't very helpful if my Sleep Powder just misses. Um, it misses twice by the way, and Ninetales hits two flamethrowers in a row, knocking Victory Bell out. I think that's the worst possible luck all lining up against me. Anyways, when that doesn't happen, 
I am very easily able to sweep through Blaine's entire team. I backtrack to Sabrina next. I am playing this pretty safe because now Victory Bell has enough speed to move first against both the Abra and the Kadabra. After I'm set up, I easily sweep through her team. Even though the Alakazam does move first and hit Psychic, I still don't take enough damage to go down, so easy victory for me. Last is Giovanni. Of course there's inconsistency here because the Doug Trio can just one hit me with Fissure, but if it doesn't, it's basically a free sweep. I have to get through the Persian, but after that, like, nothing here is a threat. So I'm gonna say something because I need to just say this, like, for personal reasons. This rival is usually awful to me in my playthroughs, and it is so nice playing a video where both Pokemon have no problems with him. So I've made it to the League, and now I want to talk about the failure points for Victory Bell. And honestly, Lorelei isn't one of them. I can just sweep through her entire team with ease. However, Agatha is the first failure point because this fight is not consistent. I really have to rely on Sleep Powder in combination with Razor Leaf to defeat the ghosts. And after that, I can use Body Slam for the other two Pokemon. Now you might be wondering why not use Mimic like I used with Bioplume, but I really would like to keep Razor Leaf for the champion fight. It makes that battle faster. I can knock out the Sand Slash in one hit, and I can also knock out the Cloister in a single hit, so I don't have to rely on Sleep Powder then. Plus, earlier in the playthrough, I don't have to spend time buying a Poke Doll, and I also get to skip Copycat's house entirely. Plus, I save the time that I would have to open the bag and teach my Pokemon Mimic and all of that really adds up. So what I'm really doing here is a trade-off between consistency and the best possible time. I think Victory Bell has the best possible time with this current moveset, but Mimic and Lick probably would be more consistent, and that shows here because I do have a single reset to Agatha, which is quite painful. However, I think that it's unlikely that Victory Bell loses two fights in a row, and in this case, I do manage to defeat her on my next attempt. Alright, so it's time for Lance, and I'm going to use one rare candy before him. This is to prevent the mid-battle level up so that I can move first against the Aerodactyl. Unfortunately, I can't one-hit it. I'm actually a lower level this time, so I'm going to have to use Sleep Powder. It misses, Aerodactyl uses Fly, and gets a critical hit and knocks Victory Bell out. Like, ah, uh, very frustrating. So both Agatha and Lance are are the failure points in the league, but once I defeat the Aerodactyl, I move on to the champion, and his team is trivial. Because the AI is locked into Poison Sting here, I can just set up Swords Dance for free, and once I do that, I have enough speed and enough attack that I can one-hit all of his Pokemon and take the victory. So that's it for Victory Bell's second playthrough. It clocks in with a time of 41 minutes and 32 seconds, with three resets at level 59, with a game time of two hours and 38 minutes. So I was able to improve all of my metrics. Less real time, less resets, a lower level finish, and a lower game time finish. So now I want to take a moment to mention just how similar these two Pokemon really are. Sometimes a different stat distribution makes Pokemon play very differently, but I think that Vileplume is going to benefit from being just locked into the exact same route that Victory Bell was on. What that means is that I'm going to play the early game the same as I did with Victory Bell. However, once I reach Celadon City, I realize something. Why don't I fight Erica first, get all the money from that gym, and then I will be able to buy more vitamins in the department store. By doing this, I am now able to afford 4 Carbos, which is really nice for Vileplume's speed. After that, I can head to Pokemon Tower, and from here I'm back on track for the exact same Sylph as I had with Victory Bell. Once I defeat the Machoke, I just barely level up, I use rare candies, but here with Vileplume, I am only going to use 4. So going to only level 40 is just over a damage rounding threshold. I was doing 41 previously with Victory Bell for speed reasons, so that it would move first against his entire team, but with Vileplume, I'm just going to go to level 40 because I'm not going to outspeed anyways. However, now I am remembering that I can set up Sword Stance on the Sand Slash, and I have also taught Vileplume Mega Drain, which means that I can heal during this fight, and that makes the Cloister a lot easier. So the rival's pretty easy. I guess the Kadabra could get a critical hit with Psybeam, which would be very bad, but in this case it doesn't happen. Up next is Koga. He's basically the same with these two Pokemon. They're not really worried about him, but things could go wrong against the Venomoth. Anyways, after that fight, I realized that I could do something different. Instead of going to Blaine, I can head to Saffron again, pick up the TM for Mim- Ah, uh, I forgot the Poké Doll. Uh, by the way, that is because with Victory Bell, you do not need the Poké Doll, and I played Victory Bell before this playthrough, so yeah, that's really annoying. After I get the Poké Doll, I pick up Mimic, and then I head into Sabrina's gym. Now the reason that I'm going to try and fight her first with Violet 
Vileplume is that I have no chance of outspeeding even her Abra if I defeat Blaine. So by fighting her first, I'm going to get a little bit more experience for the Blaine fight, which will allow me to use Rare Candies up to level 50 instead of level 49. Now, I'm calling this the Sabrina Gamble, but really it's a gamble either way. Like, I go into the Blaine fight at a lower level, and I have a gamble against him, or I have a gamble here against Sabrina. Unfortunately, today it doesn't pay off, and I do lose once. However, in the second fight, I'm able to defeat her, and now I'm level 45. Here, because I saved one Rare Candy in Sylph, I can use 5 to take Vileplume all the way up to level 50, as I said before, and now I am ready to fight Blaine. So, I'm relying on luck here. I need to put the Ninetales to sleep so I can set up Swords Dance so that I can outspeed his team, but once I do that, I can sweep for a victory. Okay, so we're gonna go quickly through the next two fights. The only way I can lose against Giovanni is if Doug Trio uses Fissure, but it doesn't. And then against the rival on Route 22, I could lose if the Cadaver got a critical hit with Psychic, but it doesn't and I win. Okay, so it's time for the League, and unfortunately for Vileplume, it is not matched up very well against Lorelei. Because it has less attack, with Swords Dance, it's just not getting the damage ranges it needs for consistency against her. Also, the way I planned out my experience for this route, it means that I level up in the middle of the fight and I don't outspeed the Jinx, which is another potential loss. I really should have tried to optimize for that a little bit better. Luckily, I don't pay for it in this playthrough. Okay, so next is Agatha. Of course, everything can fall apart here, even though I have Lick, and yeah, Vileplume gets one reset. But in the next attempt, I thought I was going to make it through her, then Haunter puts me to sleep, confuses me, Vileplume hits itself, which does a lot because I set up with Swords Dance, it puts me back to sleep, hits Dream Eater, taking Vileplume down to 13 hit points, and then it goes for Lick, which takes me down to 6 hit points. I don't hit myself in confusion. It goes for Confuse Ray, but it fails because I'm already confused. However, my next lick hits, and I knock it out. Okay, that's good. Body Slam takes the Arbok out, and now it's time for her final Gengar. I was really worried here it was just going to go for Psychic, but instead it chooses Confuse Ray. I actually manage to move, hit Sleep Powder, and then on the next turn I don't hit myself. I get massive damage. Agatha uses a Super Potion, and once again, Vileplume doesn't hit itself and I win. That fight was ridiculously lucky, but I'm really happy to just be moving on to Lance without a reset. Against him, I use one rare candy. Unfortunately, this doesn't give me the outspeed on the Aerodactyl, but I have Ice Beam, so I can take it out as long as it doesn't get a critical hit. And with that, I move on to the champion. Now for Vileplume, I take a little bit of a different approach here, because Body Slam isn't that powerful, but I can actually mimic Earthquake to get a little bit of a boost to Vileplume Plume's damage ranges. With it, I sweep through his team and I arrive at the Cloister. Now, I'm not going to get a guaranteed one hit on it, and I thought about using Sleep Powder, but what turns out to be better is just Body Slam on the first turn. I can potentially paralyze, and I will survive any of its hits. So the only loss condition here is if Ice Beam freezes. Today, it doesn't, and I finish the Flareon off. So, Vileplume clocks in with an incredible time of 43 minutes and 56 seconds, with two resets at level 59. This took two hours and 50 minutes of game time. Now, as I was narrating that last section of the run with Vileplume, I just felt like, ah, oh, this is so inconsistent, there are so many problems with this run. But at this point, it's achieved the fifth best time that I have in Pokemon Yellow to date. So, Vileplume is actually really excellent. It is not underperforming in any way. But after these second playthroughs, I still wasn't satisfied with my results, so I went in to do a third playthrough because I thought there were a few small details that I could clean up. The first one is with Victory Bell. I can head to Erica's gym first so that I can buy an additional vitamin in the department store. In this case, I only need three Carbos to guarantee my outspeeds, but I'm going to get a Protein just to boost the damage, and this is great because after I set up Swords Dance, I will get four times the benefit from that vitamin. I go into the rival fight in Sylph still at level 41, and that's because I found another solution to get to Blaine at level 50. After defeating Giovanni and Sylph, I can use Dig to teleport back to Saffron City, and then I am going to skip Mimic, but I'm going to head for Sabrina's gym. By defeating her now, which is a little bit risky, I'm going to gain some extra experience. Then, after all the experience that the Koga fight gives me, Victory Bell will just level up to level 46. And then, I can use 4 rare candies to take it up to level 50 to face Blaine. In this fight, I'm basically just hoping that Sleep Powder doesn't miss on the Ninetales. If it doesn't, I'm going to get set up, and then I can sweep his team. In this fight, it was a little bit sketchy, but I do manage to take a first attempt victory. Giovanni's Dugtrio doesn't knock me out, so I'm able to make it through him without any problems. 
And that brings Victory Bell back to Agatha at a time of 36 minutes. This is so fast. I think a sub 40 time is possible. Unfortunately for me though, Agatha's Haunter confuses me, and as a result, Victory Bell knocks itself out with self-inflicted damage. So that was about a minute of time lost just because I had a reset there. In my next fight against her, I am able to take the victory. I move on to Lance. Once again, this is not going to be a problem if Sleep Powder doesn't miss. It does, but the Aerodactyl doesn't do enough damage anyways, so I do take it out, finish the Dragonite off, and now I've made it back to the champion. So I just want to emphasize the fact that my heart was beating so fast as this fight started. Like, the clock is ticking, and we are almost at 40 minutes, but Victory Bell might be able to do this. I knock the Alakazam out with Body Slam. Next is Executor. It goes down in one hit. Okay, 30 seconds left. Magneton is next. Body Slam gets the one hit. Then against Cloyster, Razor Leaf is going to get the guaranteed one hit. Well, unless I don't crit, but I do in this case. And all that's left is Flareon. I use Body Slam. Victory Bell takes it out. And I have clocked in with a sub 40 time, 39 minutes and 40 seconds. This was with one reset at level 59, and Victory Bell finished the game with an incredible game time of 2 hours and 34 minutes. So where does that earn Victory Bell a placement in my tier list? Well, its time is slightly slower than Gengar. It's actually only 18 seconds slower. So, Victory Bell earns itself the second spot. But what about Vileplume? Well, going into this final playthrough with it, I was thinking that I needed some other way to save time that Victory Bell didn't have. So what if I cut out all of the trainers in Mount Moon? The consequence of this is that later on once I reach Sylph, I am not going to level up from the trainer who has a Machoke. I'm actually just past halfway through a level. So I need more experience. I can head down to floor 5 and fight the guy with the mandatory Arbok, but this still just doesn't barely level me up. So if I go up, grab Sword Stance, and then fight this guy who has 2 Cubone, I can get the level that I need. Then 4 Rare Candies take me to level 40, and I can fight the rival and I am back on track for the same level of finish with Vileplume. So essentially what I did in this playthrough was I traded 3 trainers of experience early on in the game for 1 trainer of experience later on in the game. And since his Pokemon are higher levels, they just happen to give better experience yields. I once again do a gamble against Sabrina, but this one doesn't pay off for Vileplume, I have 1 reset here until I defeat her on the next attempt. And then I go into Blaine at level 50, no resets today so that's good. Giovanni's Dug Trio doesn't give me a reset. And then it's time to face Lorelei. So I thought about my strategy here because I really wanted to give Vileplume a good playthrough. And what I can do is set up twice on the Dugong, only going to plus four attack, and then I knock it out. After that, I use Sleep Powder on the Cloister and knock it out with two uses of Mega Drain. This levels me up, resetting Vileplume's badge boosts and putting my speed at 108. This is very important, by the way. Then I use Sleep Powder on the Slowbro and set up Swords Dance once, boosting my speed to get this 121, which is one more than Jinx's speed. Now I have full setup, and I've ensured the outspeed on her final two Pokemon, which gives Vileplume a much more consistent way to end this fight. Now here I'll mention a small optimization that I realized. If my Pokemon has a medium slow growth rate, and I am level 56 going into the Agatha fight, then I am going to perfectly level up to level 57 before the Lance fight. That means I can use my rare candy before Agatha, preventing the mid-fight level up in this fight and the Lance fight. This is perfect for Vileplume, because then once I set up with Swords Dance, I have enough speed to move first against all of the ghosts, and that dramatically improves the consistency here. Okay, so it's time for Lance. Let's roll the four-sided die and hope that Aerodactyl does not get a critical hit. Oh, it does, but luckily only with Wing Attack, so I finish it off. And with that, Vileplume has basically completed the game because the champion is no issue at all. So this cute grass type clocks in with an incredible time of 41 minutes and 36 seconds, with one reset at level 59 with a game time of 2 hours and 44 minutes. Okay, so let's compare the final results between these two Pokemon. Victory Bell was about 2 minutes faster than Vileplume overall. They had the same number of resets, and they also had very similar points of pain throughout the playthrough. They finished at the same level, but Victory Bell was 10 minutes faster with game time. So I think undoubtedly for a solo playthrough of Pokemon Yellow, Victory Bell ends up being the better Pokemon. It ends up being the second best Pokemon overall in my tier list, but let's not let that overshadow the fact that Vileplume put out some absolutely incredible results. 
With them, it earns itself the fourth overall spot in my tier list, just behind Nido King and just ahead of Nido Queen. So the victor is obvious. It is Victory Bell. It's actually in Victory Bell's name. But a question still lingers in my mind. What happens with Victory Bell if we remove the trainers in Mount Moon? Also, what happens if it doesn't reset against Agatha? I want to make very clear that yes, I am going to do a fourth playthrough with Victory Bell, and I am going to put it in this video, and I am specifically putting it in this video because of my voice. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you won't know that I've been dealing with a bit of a vocal injury. My voice is just getting fatigued very quickly. It's probably because I have really bad speaking technique, and I was trying to record a lot of videos as well as doing a bunch of live streams. As a result, I have had to rest my voice a lot this week, and that has delayed the production of this video significantly. My initial intent was to actually make a separate video, which was Victory Bell vs. Gengar, to see which one could get the top spot of the tier list, but I'm just not up for producing that video this week, so I'm gonna put this final Victory Bell playthrough in this video. By doing that, I'm sure some people will comment that this is really unfair to Vileplume because it didn't get a fourth playthrough, but I think I've already determined those results, and with three playthroughs, Victory Bell was able to beat Vileplume's result in every attempt. I think if I continued doing even re-attempts between those two, the results would continue to be the same. Now you might also think it's unfair for Gengar, like, maybe Gengar only got two playthroughs. No, 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 no. I did nine playthroughs with Gengar. So if Victory Bell is able to beat Gengar's time in its fourth playthrough, it is undoubtedly better than Gengar. Now, I already feel like Victory Bell is better than Gengar, and that's largely because Victory Bell feels like the most consistent Pokémon that I have played with to this point. So often when I'm playing with a powerhouse Pokémon, it feels like I have to make risky choices throughout the playthrough, and uh, yeah, that was the case with Gengar. It relies on hypnosis in some critical fights. Go check out my Gengar vs. Gengar video if you want to see how that all plays out. But for Victory Bell, it does not have to rely on sleep nearly as much, and when it does, it's more consistent because Sleep Powder has 15% more accuracy. And 15% is a lot when you are rolling this move over and over and over again. So with Victory Bell, what I'm going to do is take the same route that I used with Vileplume in its last playthrough, which is skipping the trainers in Mount Moon. Then I go to Erica, the department store, and finally Sylph. I defeat the Cubone trainer with two Pokemon for a little bit more experience, and then against the rival, I apply the strategy that I was using with Vileplume to Victory Bell again, which is to only use four rare candies to get up to level 40. By the way, I already had enough speed to move first against the rival's Kadabra, so I didn't need level 41 after all. Then, after I finish off Sylph, I make another improvement to the route. I head straight to Sabrina's gym. I don't need Mimic, of course, and defeating her is going to give Victory Bell more experience. However, I am doing this before I fight Koga. That's why it's risky. Still, Victory Bell is such a powerhouse and it takes a first attempt of victory against her. So I move on to Koga, defeat him, and then against Blaine, I can be level 50 by using five rare candies. And I'm going to jump ahead to a fight that uh, you don't expect me to be jumping ahead to. It's uh, <laughs> the hiker in the Elite Four. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I didn't heal going into this fight because I was wanting to save as much time as possible. And I also didn't save going into this fight because I'm like, there is no chance that I lose. Why would I waste like three to four seconds saving when I can just go into the fight and win? And yeah, then against Hitmonlee, Razorleaf misses, which is exactly what I don't need. And the fighting type hits high jump kick, doing a decent amount of damage to me. And then it starts to set up double team. So this is quite bad, but luckily Razorleaf does hit, I take it out, I finish off the next Onyx, but he still has a Machamp. I go for Razorleaf, it takes it down to orange health, and uh, okay, yeah, there it is. It's his X defend, so I didn't have to worry. I finish off his ace, and with that, I have made it to Agatha. Now, I can also apply here the same experience optimization by using the rare candy right in front of Agatha. I know this looks weird because I'm actually not utilizing a bunch of experience that I've gained to this point, but that doesn't matter. It is far more important to just not level up in the middle of one of these key fights when you're setting up with a powerful Pokemon. Now that Victory Bell outspeeds all of Agatha's Pokemon, I am fairly sure that I am going to be able to win this one. And on my first attempt, I do. So I've made it through the longest fight without a reset. Now the only thing that could give me a reset is Lance. And against him, I was like, I'm only going to lose if he gets a critical hit. So why wouldn't I just use Body Slam and not even roll for Sleep Powder? Because if it misses, then it's the same scenario as if I just attacked. But uh, in this case, he uses Fly and he does get a critical hit. So 
Ah, uh, that's a very frustrating first reset with Victory Bell. However, in the next fight, I play with my former strategy using Sleep Powder. This allows me to knock the Aerodactyl out, and with that, I have finished off Lance. Now, I just want to say, the clock is 38 minutes and 40 seconds here. I have to use a full restore. Well, I actually didn't. I had full health, so I just wasted a little bit of time. Then I use an elixir. At this point, like, my hands were so sweaty. My heart was beating so fast. It is, I think, possible to get a time under 39 minutes with Victory Bell. But today I'm not going to get that because I had the one reset against Lance. And Gengar's time is quickly approaching. Remember, Gengar's time is 39 minutes and 22 seconds. So after getting set up, I start my sweep. I get to Cloister. Okay, we're getting really close. I knock it out with Raise Relief. Flareon is next. I go for Body Slam. And Victory Bell clocks in with a time of 39 minutes and 18 seconds. It beat Gengar. And it only had one reset, which is actually less resets than Gengar. It finished the game at the same level. And it beat Gengar's game time by four minutes. So today, Victory Bell earns itself the top spot in the tier list. Now... Just before I close out this video, I want to make an observation. All of the S-tier Pokémon are poison types. Can we just take a moment and let that sink in? I find it so weird. It's also worth noting that all the mono poison types that I've used to this point are at like the bottom of the tier list. They're all the worst Pokémon. <laughs> So I'm starting to come to the understanding that Poison type actually might be the best secondary typing for a solo playthrough. And this is because of how the AI interacts with it as a typing. There are so many cases where the primary typing carries you through the playthrough, and then the Poison typing just kind of helps defensively occasionally by like making the AI choose Reflect when it should be choosing an attacking move. Anyways, we'll have to wait for my Tentacruel playthrough to find out if that Poison Beast can also make its way into the S tier. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and comment because I do try to read them all, but it's getting to be almost impossible. Thank you so much for engaging in the community. I really value being able to talk about Pokemon with all of you. It means so much to me. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, that also means the world to me. Thank you for allowing me to hire people to constantly improve the quality of these videos. Thanks so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Remember, the link to their website and for my code is in the description. That's all I've got. If you made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video.